Thank you all. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here tonight, and I'm tremendously honored by the Gardner Foundation and uh, all of your support and uh, enthusiasm. I'll uh, first of all tell you a little bit about the music. It seems like kind of an odd choice, perhaps, for somebody who spent his life in uh, Africa and in Winnipeg. But uh, <laughs> what uh, it came about uh, because uh, a number of years ago, I don't remember how many, one of my first major radio interviews was with Vicki Gavaro, and some of you will remember her from a marvelous CBC program. And uh, she had these long interview programs um, which uh, included music. And she asked me what music I wanted to play. And I said, well, I'd like some African music. So the CBC looked through the library, and they didn't have any African music. <laughs> so I chose Bob Marley, and that was the song I chose. Uh, but by the way, I tried to change it. I was going to change it to a Kenyan tune called Jambo Buana, which some of you who've been to Kenya will appreciate the triviality of that. But uh, 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 Summer wouldn't answer my emails when I asked her to, to change the music last week. But anyway, thinking about it over, over this week, I kind of thought it was appropriate in that, you know, I spent my career studying female sex workers, about 3,000 of them in Kenya, and that's where, basically where I, uh, I made my name. I also have an ex-wife and a new wife, uh, three daughters, uh, three stepdaughters, and two mother-in-laws. So I know something about no woman, no cry. I don't really understand it, but uh, I think I have some expertise. Uh, I thought the, uh, another story would be how I came to learn of my Whiteman Award. Uh, about last year, uh, at this time, uh, my wife and I, Joanne Canali, who's over there and who's a wonderful support for me, uh, uh, came to the Gardner event uh, and we bought our own tickets. Or at least uh, Joanne bought hers through uh, her company and I asked the University of Manitoba to pay for mine. And uh, I, they didn't pay and they didn't pay and they didn't pay. So in the spring uh, last year, I got this call from John Dirks. And he said, hello, Frank, it's John Dirks. And I said, oh my god, he's chasing me for the, for the payment. <laughs> but no. <laughs> he was telling me I was this year's Whiteman Award, which was, so my first reaction to learning I got the Whiteman was one of relief, <laughs> not one of excitement or joy. Uh, so I, I love that story. <laughs> anyway, um, so I've got a, too many people to thank. I, unlike uh, the people who've gone before me, I can't remember the names of all the graduate students and, and, and people I've trained, but I know the institutions that I work with. And I've been affiliated with the University of Manitoba since I was 17 years old, which I've uh, said many times. And I'm still affiliated with the University of Manitoba, and they've been great to me. And it's amazing to me that the University of Manitoba, uh, this smallish school on, uh, in the middle of Canada, has emerged as a global leader in, in, in global health. Uh, and uh, I think, uh, you know, Manitoba competes with the Harvards, the Stanfords, the Yales, uh, whatever, in terms of what we've contributed uh, to the field of global health, and continue to do so. And that's because of, I think, uh, first of all, the vision of Alan Ronald, who is my mentor and who had the idea to go to Kenya and start work on, uh, on uh, sexually transmitted infections. And uh, other people like Keith Folk, and who's my first graduate student, who's here somewhere, I'm not really quite sure where, but uh, who continued that and, and is continuing that today, and Steve Moses and uh, Jamie Blanchard, uh, all of whom are making a major difference in, in, in global health worldwide. Also need to thank the University of Nairobi, um, who uh, welcomed me as a visiting scientist back in 1984 uh, for two years, but I stayed for 17. 
So I was like the guest from hell. <laughs> I wouldn't go home. <laughs> but they gave me a good send-off when I did go, finally. And I uh, have many, many of the people that I worked with and mentored and trained there are now in leadership positions at the University of Nairobi. And then finally, most recently, um, the Public Health Agency of Canada, uh, where I started as uh, scientific, scientific director of the National Microbiology Lab in uh, about 2000, has been incredibly good to me. Uh, they uh, sort of gave me the keys to the lab, didn't give me any training, uh, gave me a $5 million deficit, and said, go fill your boots, uh, do whatever you want, uh, which is what I did. Um, and that, you know, that, that, uh, that work ended up with the Ebola vaccine, with the ZMAP, uh, monoclonal antibody therapy, with all kinds of other uh, public health advances. Um, and I'd like to acknowledge the government of Canada, who are represented here tonight by uh, uh, Kirsty Duncan, who's a good friend, and uh, uh, Minister Jane Philpott, who's my boss now, and I met for the first time tonight. Uh, <laughs> Good to meet you, Minister Philpott. Uh, so and finally, I'll close with uh, thanking uh, all the people that made this possible. The Gairdner Foundation tonight, uh, University of Manitoba, who put forward my name, and Alan Ronald, who uh, his main job these days seems to be writing letters of nomination for me for various prizes. And he's doing a pretty good job, <laughs> as, as far as I can tell. Keep it up, Alan. <laughs> Uh, the Public Health Agency of Canada, who are represented here tonight, and all the people that funded us, mainly the government of Canada, the CHR, uh, what used to be CETA, uh, IDRC, uh, and uh, also the, uh, we've had lots of money from the United States and philanthropic organizations. So we've had funding from the National Institutes of Allergy and Infectious Diseases through Tony Fauci's shop. And, uh, funding from the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation and, and others. And I close by saying that uh, I feel very privileged to speak before Tony Fauci tonight uh, because he's a, an icon in the whole infectious disease and AIDS field and uh, it's a privilege to precede him on the stage. Thank you very much.